be to be a bit quick about Monerullo, just in case somebody doesn't know what it is. It's a mobile wallet. Uh, it's a mobile wallet for Monero. It was the first one that appeared in 2017, and there was no one. Um, it's only for Android, and uh, it's the creation of M2049er, which is the main coder. It's the only one that knows how to code in the Monero team. We also have Balsar that joined afterwards, and me. The group was helped to be formed by Diego Rera, that was in charge of so many things of the Monero community back in the day. So you could say that Monerullo is a mix of, um, of Austrian engineering and Swedish design. And my side would be the Argentinian side of knowing what to do with money when it's broken. So I say that Monerullo is a more wallet for Monero. It's free and free. It's open source, it's released on the Apache license, so it means that everybody can copy and modify whatever they want and share. People are already doing that. We have like a fork that is kind of well known now, which is good, we love that. And it's also of course free because people can get it. From several places, we can get it from the Play Store, if you are kind of a normie, but you can also get the APK from GitHub. And of course, we are on F-Droid, which is the Play Store that we own like to use. Okay, uh, Monerullo right now is, uh, is used by more than 25,000 users, active users, and those, uh, that picture is actually of 25,000 pe people, so you get an idea. So every time that you're using that, know that you are not alone. Sometimes it's, it feels like that in the real life because nobody knows about Moneros and even less people know about Monerullo, but we are a lot of, of us now. And these are, so, are only the Play Store people because we, we think that probably since Monero is a private focused <laughs> cryptocurrency, we don't know how many people are using actually. And we don't want to know. So people from Metro and people from the APK, we don't have any stats on that. So. Since 2017 it's been working or not, this is the joke that we like to, to use because our releases are kind of like this. It's like a Schrodinger kind of release. It's done and then it's just five minutes afterwards, it's not done, Monero changes something, people complain about something, and we keep changing and updating, updating all the time. So this is like our mantra. Every time when we feel like nervous and it's like, oh, this is bad. It did not work in since 2017 and people keep using it, so it's all right. So, but we, are, but we, did, um, we did something different this year. Maybe it was COVID, I don't know. Uh, we got together virtually and we, we had a, like a very personal conversation between the team about, because we are like a team of volunteers. And each of us has his own like day job, so we have to earn our livings and by night we fight crime and <laughs> work on Monerullo's shit. And uh, uh, we had like a really big conversation about if we wanted to keep developing it or not, if it was worth it. Now there's, there are more wallets around, so it's not like super needed. And, uh, and if everybody was in, I don't know if you can see these things, but we eventually tried to went back to first principles and my talk is why we wanted you. So we started to have, for the first time between us, we were working together for a, a couple of years already. What do we know, or what do we think about money, and what do we know? Um, for example, I would still want to keep being like a Monero wallet. Uh, this is something better out, out there than Monero? It's not, but I'm just <laughs> telling you, for us at least. So you were this out. This is like, a, probably, if I am lucky, this is my life. It's one block one block per week. I'm assuming that I live up to um, 90 years old. I'm almost right there in the middle. I'm 40 right now. So I don't look like that. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm right there. And the, last, and the last orange block is this week that I'm using to talk to you. So we thought it's like, okay, what is the scarcest thing that we have? This part is going to be very quick. The fastest thing, that, the scarcest thing that we have is Time, of course, we haven't found a way to print that 
and to evaluate the time that we have in this slide. So we managed to stretch it a bit. We, we live longer now than we did before, but not so much as uh, to make it not, not worth anything like Argentinian pesos, for example. They're not worth much. Um, so we, we realized that this may sound stupid, but what we do all the time is to trade our time for stuff that we need, for food, for, for food at least, shelter, clothing, all, all those kind of basic stuff. And then if we have spare money, <laughs> spare time, and, and time to work on it, um, we do more, we get more fancy stuff, right? So this is pretty basic. And we think that, we realize that, okay, when you are lucky enough to get more productive, you get more free time for you. So what you do is we came up with a way to save, this is like the core belief of what we have in Monerio, a way to save our spare time, our effort in something, and we invented money, which is like the battery, like a battery for time, right? So do we, need, do we want to keep uh, do just being a Monero wallet? We think we do because Monero is just for us the best money we invented yet. We think it has to it has to have a couple of properties. Everybody is going to talk about that today and tomorrow here. It needs to be like, for example, decentralized and private enough and all that. But the important thing for us is privacy. And I was I would say why? So we keep we're trading all the time our time. This is the famous pyramid of needs of Maslow on the basis of all the basic stuff and as we are going moving forward, up and up and up, we get to spend on fancy stuff, right? Down there is like food, shelter, and then we get to, I don't know, iPods and so much, and organic shampoo and stuff like that, right? On the top. And uh, we say, okay, we are doing this, we are doing a wallet, the wallet to save, to save, uh, it's, it's like a battery on your pocket and we, we're doing like that. Um, we are using it for this. And what is, maybe it's just my bringing, I came from a country with a very shitty money and it's been like that for generations. So what I've noticed is that when you talk to people that were born on, on places when money doesn't work that well, uh, the, the answer for crypto is super, super easy and straightforward. So instead of focusing, focusing as a wallet developer on financial instruments and stuff like that, we wanted to focus on the usage of people that are kind of money specialists. And we, we think that people in the developing world, and I'm using developing as a whole full statement, because it's going to get developed, I'm not so sure. Um, and uh, I'm using that. So, another way of seeing, of looking at that pyramid is that actually there's more people that just get to the basics than people in numbers, than people that get to the top of that. And this is not a geographic distribution, it's not like yeah, it's just only like poor countries or rich countries, people like that everywhere. But we realize that people that need to trade their time and are forced to do that, it's like you selling all the time in a beer market, right? You cannot control the price. The price is controlled by your counterparty, the one that is giving to you. So if you need to buy food, if you need to buy basic things, you, you cannot pick when inside you're going to spend your moneros. So we are we decided to buy, to design, and this is the core part of the talk. We have to design for these people first. Because the way that we understand the world, we are having objectively better lives all the time. I mean things are improving everywhere, even for people with less means. But financially, the money system is getting worse for everybody, even in the so-called first world. And so we notice that we better pay attention to the people that know what they're doing with their money and design for them, and everybody else will join afterwards soon enough. This is what we see is going on. Things are starting to bleed. And it's not getting, getting greener, it's getting redder every day. For example, the whole thing with the Canada trackers that you said before, and nowadays people are talking about inflation on places that they weren't talking about that a couple of years ago. So welcome aboard. 
So back to designing. So we took this year, we took this approach for every feature that we had in Monerio. Uh, we, we start to see, well, what is it? This is more belongs more to the bottom of the pyramid or to the top of the one. Um, let's get it right first, the bottom one, and let's get it upwards slowly. For example, we started on Android. Android is the most used operating system almost in the world, at least on mobile, and especially in the developing world. Now iOS is getting a bit widespread, and we are looking into creating an iOS version for Maruya, but we want to nail this one first. Just an example. Okay. And this, this was a very contentious topic, even inside the team, because you have people in both camps. And you will hear a lot here today. Tell Henry talk about this as well, um, which is we need to make crypto easier if we want adoption. And I agree with that part of the statement, but there is a caveat for that which is we don't want to build Nespresso machines. And there's a reason for that. If we aim for the people that knows more about money, and, uh, we need, how to say, if you do things too, too simple, one of the things that we value about Monero is this decentralization, right? So if we make things too simple in the UI and we start hidden things, hiding things be, be, be behind the, the UI, people are not doesn't know, don't know what is going on, right? And if people don't know what is going on at all, they don't learn. They think it's just PayPal and not like a super fancy hackerish decentralized cryptocurrency that works on a blockchain and all that. So you cannot get everybody to watch like 15 Andrea Santonopoulos talks before using mo money. But, but, and we are not still, still not there, I know, but we are trying to do that in the UX and in the materials that we provide for the users to make it kind of like almost there, right? For example, uh, in the in the world we have a no screen, right? So you have it on the top, it's, it's right there on the top. It's, it's a very prominent, it's like prime real estate for a wallet. Um, we want, we put the node address in there and you can search for nodes. So why is that? Why not just use default nodes? Because we don't want everybody to use the same nodes. That's the reason. And the compromise that we had to do was to just, after, before that, it was just, this is a good, like a good example of conversation between the users and, and us. At the first, we, we have just like an auto, we thought that the best idea would be to have an auto setting, that it just scans in the Monero network for an open nodes, public nodes, and just picks the one that is best for you based on ping, right? So it's like this, best thing ever, it's super decentralized, it's not even using the same four, five, or even 10 community run nodes of Monero. It doesn't work that well, right? Not yet, at least. So we compromise and we make, okay, just so keep the auto feature, people can refresh to get new nodes, nodes that we, of course, we don't control, but there is a preset of five, I think now it's like six or 10 nodes that you can, if you are in trouble, it's like a beacon thing that you can say, help, 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 and it populates the, it doesn't raise your custom nodes, but it populates it with, with trusted nodes that actually work most of the time. So we are all the time in, in between those stages of being super easy and super not. We don't want to be Nespresso machines that people are forced to use because they don't know how to make coffee, right? If you like Monero, if you like the idea, you're not going to download the wallet just because you were browsing the, the, the Play Store and you say, yeah, what the fuck, just try. No, some, in somewhere, sometime, you hear about Monero, you look up for it. So you, I'm, we are assuming that we have some will to use it, right? So when you do, we want to present you with an espresso machine that is kind of fancy, it's kind of hipster, I know, when trying to make it as, to look as nice as possible. And we, we think that when people, we want to empower people, right? We think that when people know what they're doing and manage to understand how things is working behind the scenes, they actually enjoy it more, not less. And it's our goal that if people just don't like, I don't know, the color that we are using in Monero or something, they can go to another wallet and they understand what is happening. Because for, for us, an example is that is Monero syncing, right? 
nobody gets more async and doesn't make any sense, but you just use PayPal or something. But we are not going, going to get rid of that. So let's try to provide as much feedback to the user as possible so they know what they're doing. And hopefully, people are going to notice, just like you're trying to master as person, much as like, oh, yeah, I should do this and that, and it's going to be better. It's going to taste better. But once you get it to work right, which is going to take a few tries, you won't want to, back, to go back to the Nespresso thing. That's the whole idea that we have, and I hope. So, having that in mind, going back to the first principles, those are the things that we think people need in a Monero-based wallet. And we are deciding which features goes to each. And back to the, to the Espresso analogy, we want the users to feel like Liam here, super capable, something is breaking, maybe your country's money is breaking, maybe you, are, you want to buy illegal stuff online, maybe you want to fund a super interesting like uh, journalism in a country that is at risk, or personal safety is at risk at least. Those cases are going to exist all the time, but we are welcoming more and more normal people to the party that start to see news and notice that uh, maybe things are not working as good as they were before, or at least as, as they look as they were before. So, I don't know how much time do I have. Yeah, a couple of, there is a feature that is not here that people ask about. For example, it's a good example of what I'm talking about design, is the Psychic Project. The Psychic Project was born of, uh, the Psychic Project is a separate app which I'm going to use on a different, in a different phone, and it has to work for, it has to work in, in Android. Uh, at first, it's going to work on, on diff, different platforms afterwards, but it's basically a replacement for a ledger. Remember what happened last time with Ledger that they leak all their emails and addresses of people that bought a ledger from them. So if you were very careful, it was, it was a nice example of counterproductive thinking, right? Because if you were very careful, I just want to buy a hardware wallet to be safe, and I want to buy it from the guy straight, not from a third party, so I'm safer. They leaked all the emails and personal information, even the delivery address. And of course, I checked, and for example, there were like five, six people in my country with addresses and all that. And there's also a difference in the pyramid thing because people near the bottom, they're not just worried about taxes. They are worried about the, the physical well-being in regards to crypto. And a very small amount of Monero could be several months of a regular payment for people like in Argentina, and it's basically that even worse. So that's what we see about Monero fees that are very low to use it. Um, so in the Psychic Project, it's, it's, uh, it replaces the ledger. It's a side, it's a side app that you should keep. Yeah. We think that people, even in third world, because third world countries, for example, they, they usually skip a generation, so they don't have landlines. They just keep from not having phones to having cell phones, for example. So anybody has like a spare, an old cell phone, cell phone. So let's put a cell phone, put it on offline mode forever, hopefully. I hope there was an easy way to just break the antenna and you will be safe, but no. You create a wallet there and it communicates with Monerullo, but it's an open standard. Any wallet can implement this. Monerullo and every wallet would think it's a ledger and it's on Bluetooth, so it looks like a ledger run X. And you keep your, your keys offline. So you have all the security of, um, of a hardware wallet, but you didn't have to pay anything for it. And for example, it may be counterintuitive for you, but in many countries, it's very difficult to even get a lens. Not even pay for something like a hardware wallet, because it's a lot of money, like $50, $70 is a lot of money for many people, but also for customs. And if you're really worried about the state, for example, you should not import like cryptocurrency related devices. We say that we don't want ASICs for that reason. Let's not use hardware wallets either. So that's one of the of examples. Another another example is, uh, of course, we have Orbot to, to connect with to Tor for extra safety on the connection side. Um, 
it's important also to have um, the crazy path, which is kind of contentious for some people. But we noticed that there wasn't much security if you choose like a very weak passport on your on your phone files. And now it's a bit better because now, now for the past couple of years, Android enforced you to use like the inside storage, which is encrypted, on your with, with your Android stuff. But before that, you just have like open, you have the, the wallet files on the file system, just on the idea of it, right? So uh, M249 already came out with a solution for that, which is like creates like hash of, of your actual password and uses that to, to encrypt the wallet files. So you get like the convenience of being able to open the wallet is not perfect. You can open the wallet with your easy one, two, three, four password or just blank password. People don't know that you can you can leave the password blank and it's just open your wallet if you don't want the password on it. But the files on your phone are super protected with an encrypted key that is as strong as your seed, basically, or, or more, maybe. So it's one of those trade-offs that you do, but because if you don't save that or you want to export your wallet files, that's the actual password of your wallet keys, which is something that is very tricky to get people to understand, right? So there's many features coming down the line. They are private for a good reason, and uh, we want to keep developing on it. So this is the end of my presentation. This is our mascot there. Uh, we believe it's important. We try to do our best. We know we have limitations, but we really are trying to do our best. We welcome all the help that we can get. We are totally funded by people we, we now have like a, a funding uh, initiative. One sponsor, it's the competition, so it's one sponsor less. Um, uh, I didn't do that in purpose. Um, there is a, a site that is funding that one of you that, I, that app, which is one way that we get for people not only to fund our development of new features, but also it's super interesting for us to know what they want first. So it's like a voting mechanism. You can just send 0 0.0001 Monero. And believe me, we take that into account. We, we, we start working before the, 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 the goal is completed, but we really try to make it, you can gain the system also, <laughs> but we try to give it priority to, to, to those features that even if people don't have enough money, but you have more donations, we start to work on those first, instead of like favoring the well, so to speak. So this is all that we have. This is our, our website. Please donate, you bastards. It's the way that it works. Um, we welcome all the help that you can you can give us. I'm not only about money, but reach reach to us, fork it, make it better. We can copy it back and say it was our idea. And uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for trading your time.